Sometimes you'll want to leverage those existing CAD files that you've used in previous projects inside of your Revit project environment. To do this, your usually best bet is to create a drafting view. Then in the drafting view, insert in that AutoCAD detail that you like to use, and then draw over the top of it or clean it up so that it plots and looks the way that it should and it's consistent throughout the document set. Now to accomplish this, you need to begin by creating that drafting view. And because it's a drafting view, we'll find that under the View tab on the ribbon and selecting on Drafting View. It'll ask for the name of that drafting view, and that'll be the name it shows up underneath the project browser over on the left-hand side. In this case, I'm going to call it a garage detail. It's not the most descriptive name for it, but it is accurate. It is a detail of part of the garage. Next, we have the scale, and I know that this is 3 quarters of an inch equals a foot. And click on OK to this. It's now created a new Drafting Views category under the Project Browser. And if you expand it out by clicking on a little plus sign, you can see that this is a garage detail. And it's now 3 quarters of an inch equals a foot, and it's just a blank drawing area right now. To insert in that CAD information, we come to the Insert tab, and we have one of two different ways we can bring that CAD information in. We can either link it in, or we can import it in. If you link it in, and I'll do this as an example, You'll then have the ability to select on that CAD detail that you want to bring in. In this case, it's named 1901 CAD. From here, click on Open. Give it a few seconds to process. The next thing to do will be to either type in the letters Z, E, or double click really quick with the wheel on your mouse, and that will zoom extent so you can see that entire detail. If this is good enough, at this point you can place it in your drawing and start to print it. More than likely, you want to do some cleanup of this, and the reasoning is that this isn't really your typical Revit font. Most likely, your Revit arrows probably don't look like this. If you zoom out, you'll start to see some oddities, like this little arc stops right here instead of coming all the way on over. So there's going to be a lot of cleanup that needs to happen in here, and really, if it's a linked file, it's difficult to clean it up inside of this environment. What you can do, though, is that you can trace over a linked file. And you can use your drawing tools to draw lines by picking the endpoint of a line to the next endpoint of the line, and just start to sketch right over the top of it. Then whenever you're done, you can highlight on it, and then click the Delete key on your keyboard, or just right-click, and then go to Delete in order to remove that detail. At that point, because you traced over the top of it, put in your text, you'll have an exact copy of that detail just redrawn inside of Revit. The nice thing about doing that with the link is that you know that you get all the links exactly right. You don't have to do much measuring. It's just click, 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 and fill in the information without having to be amazingly accurate because the accuracy is already drawn for you inside of the original CAD detail. Now, the other thing that you could do instead of linking it in and then being forced to just trace over the top of it is you can import the CAD information in. If you do this, you can select on that CAD file just like we did before, click on Open. In this case, we didn't have to zoom out because we already were zoomed out. If I select on it, it looks exactly the same as it did before, but we now have something special, and that's called Explode. What Explode will allow you to do is if you select where the word Explode is at, there are two different options. One is Full Explode, and then there's Partial Explode. The full explode will explode everything. And when I say everything, that includes down to each and every line that makes up these circles in the gravel. It will explode these patterns here, so each of these little tiny lines that make up the concrete symbol would be individual lines. In short, it would be a big mess inside of this detail. On the other hand, though, the other option is a partial explode. You'll get a warning message, and you can close that warning message down. What the warning message said is that this originally came from a drawing that had three-dimensional information in it, and you can't bring that three-dimensional information into a drafting view. Are you okay with that? And by clicking on OK, it just got rid of that three-dimensional information. Here, we can see that if we highlight over any of these pieces, things like the title can be highlighted, the dimensions can be highlighted, and I'll call it a hatch pattern because that's what it originally was in AutoCAD, but it's now a fill pattern in Revit it's all one piece. It's not individual chunks. It's not individual pieces of concrete, for instance. There is a problem, though. Let's take a look at this arc. 
each individual lines and not a true arc. This arrowhead is no longer an arrowhead. It's line work that looks like an arrowhead. Your dimensions are the same way. Your leaders. Everything that might be part of a dimension that was brought in from that AutoCAD environment is now an individual line. Even the text, which would have been multi-line text, may be showing up as being just a single line text. Now, one thing that you can do is select on any of these pieces of text, come in here to your properties dialog, and then change it on the type selector list to be an appropriate size font, such as 330 seconds. And you could do this throughout. The only problem is though, is as you come in and you window around these things, you pick on the different text sizes you wanna have, you start to see how these get to be spaced a little closer than what you'd like. So you'd have to take the time to pull these apart, move these to the right locations, so that they start to have the right look and feel to them. As far as I'm concerned, the only thing that's really good about that procedure is the fact that you do get these individual lines as well as the fill patterns and they're still available to you. It means that you don't necessarily have to recreate such things as the fill patterns. You don't have to redimension each and every one of these because they're already dimensioned appropriately. All you need to do is select on each of these items and then pick where you have your different detail lines and tell it that you want it to be a certain line, a certain line weight. For instance, and I realize this is a little bit odd, I'm going to pick wide lines for this, but I wanted to pick wide lines just so you could see a fairly dramatic difference here on the screen. See how that's a lot thicker now? And you could go through this on all the lines that make up this detail and give them the appropriate line weights without having to redraw it from scratch. But the things you will need to redraw from scratch are going to be the text, the arrows. Otherwise, it's just never going to look right or you'll be spending half your day trying to move these around when in reality you could have came in, just used your text commands from underneath annotate and just renoted the entire thing in a matter of minutes. One other thing that you should do if you bring these in, you should always get rid of the title that's associated with them. And then you can just hit the delete key after you've highlighted on those entities. The reasoning is, this is a drafting view. Because it's a view, the second you pull it onto a sheet, it'll automatically have a title generated for itself. So to kind of wrap this up and talk a little bit more about what it is that we did, if we want to bring in your CAD information, you probably want to have them into a drafting view. Second. You may want to just link it in if you want to trace over the top of it using your drawing commands found underneath annotate. Also, if you instead decide to import it in so you can use the existing line work without having to redraw it, remember you're going to have to highlight over all this stuff and then delete it, get rid of it, get rid of your dimensions, get rid of your text, and probably renote the entire thing so that it looks right and meets your company standards. Both of these processes sound like they take a long time. The reality of it is, is that for most CAD details, you can usually completely redo it in less than five minutes. The only issue with that is though, is that when you bring in your CAD details, your CAD information, just remember, you should always get rid of the CAD information because it's not going to meet your standards. And the second reason is, is that CAD information can also lead to instability issues in your Revit models. Autodesk once said that about 85% of all the issues that they have inside of the software program, if that Revit file doesn't want to open, if Autodesk gets them, they will strip the AutoCAD information out. 85% of the time, that's what's causing the issue inside of the Revit file. So it gives you a little bit of a background as to bringing in this CAD information is fine. Tracing over it is fine. But it makes more sense to get rid of it or select on individual pieces of information and turn it into true Revit entities because it'll look better, meet your standards, and also add to the stability of your Revit design.